And we move over to our next speaker, Christine Huang, Professor Christine Huang from Hong Kong, who came over and will talk about the genetics of longevity. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before starting my presentation, I'd have to thank you, big thanks to Dr. Evelyn. She brought the uh, Longevity Medical Society and she brought the professional training to all of the new training from Western to Eastern. And thank you so much, Morton, for having me here. And this is my first time in Copenhagen. Actually, I, I have been with ARDD for three years but it's my first time in person, so thank you. And especially Dr. Alex Javarokov, thank you so much for nurturing the whole longevity ecosystem, not only in Western country, but also have to say that is in, um, yeah, in China, in Hong Kong, and in Asia. So before starting my presentation, I wanted to know how many people here from China Hands up. <laughs> yeah, Hong Kong, of course, included. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I promise in the next year we are going to have more and more Chinese presenters and more and more attendees to ARDD from China, from Asia. Thank you. Okay. So uh, my topic today, that is genetic and epigenetic basis of aging and physical fitness in healthy longevity. Before I jump into scientific things, I wanted to introduce a little bit what is happening in China, in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, this specific special area, the bridge from China to, um, yeah, Copenhagen to Europe and to uh, United States. So um, in, uh, innovation at this moment is the mainstream in Hong Kong. Even during the past three years, the pandemic, COVID series pandemic, Hong Kong government also still initiated with 1.2 billion US dollars on initiating uh, 28 top innovation institutions in the specific, unique Hong Kong city. So that is the first stage. And the purpose is not only to do the scientific research. The perfect for innovation in Hong Kong, this specific program, that is for continuously bringing impact from university, from scientific research, and to society. Okay, so how many institutions uh, in this flagship program, including five major universities, University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and plus Chinese Academy of Science in this specific flagship program. And here we are. With this initiative, we are building up the first, yeah, we are not the first in the world, but at the least in Asia, AI-driven end-to-end longevity solution. That is, um, from the University of Hong Kong, we have uh, nine scientific academic um, institutions, and we are the center of Hong Kong Quantum AI Lab. Hong Kong Quantum AI Lab, that is AI-based quantum solutions platform for next generation materials, of course, chemicals, discovery, and we are jointly built by the University of Hong Kong and the Caltech. So leverage technology here, we are building up the AI-driven AI -driven longevity uh, medical practice and the personalized solution. Uh, for aging biomarkers and the personalized intervention plan development. And thanks to ZP in the morning, the presentation, we have the first international collaboration with the Shiba Longevity. Okay, so once you heard about the quantum AI, maybe you start to think about, okay, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, or uh, artificial intelligence, yes, we, we are doing that. Or big data, we are doing uh, arms-driven big data. 
Um, but driven by AI, we, I wanted to emphasize today that is we are not only for the data driven, we also synthesize the aging biology into the data. So we are from the very beginning, we starting from the biology, technology, uh, bi bi biology knowledge. Then we are using artificial intelligence to do the next level practice. So our map in this field, of course, is hallmarks of aging. And the consequences that lead to, one, developing aging-related disease. Of course, we are focusing on that, and we are developing uh, liquid biopsy technology driven by omics um, prevention and prediction. And another side that is losing physical fitness and mental capacity. This is what I wanted to emphasize today, because um, once I know about the time slots and the speakers, I know some of people definitely experts in the field are going to introduce longevity medical practice. And some are definitely going to introduce mental uh, capacity um, specific knowledge. And I wanted to emphasize the physical fitness for, from gen genome and epigenome side. Okay, so first of all, genetics and epigenetics are the foundation of aging research. Of course, we know that, and we know, and, and we are not, and, and we also know that is genetics contributes to 25 percent of the basis. We are talking about the genetics. We are talking about inherited genetic variants and the somatic mutations. And another important thing, and I wanted to. Uh, mention here that is environment is super important. A tree they live in Copenhagen or they live in Hong Kong going to develop different phenotype, right? So we know that is maybe uh, influenced by lifestyle, working conditions, environment exposure, and that leads to a very interesting topic: epigenetics. So all together, we are developing aging process. And that is also impairing um, muscular secular system, cardiovascular system, metabolic system, and immune system, definition, uh, the, uh, the, the declines. So therefore, genetic and epigenetics plays a very important role in aging process. And for us, our roadmap of the not only study and our roadmap in the clinic and for how to leverage AI power and, and innovation to make the longevity practice and new technology closer and make, make the loop shorter. We are starting from the mechanism of, of, of genetic and epigenetic alterations to aging process. So first of all, we divided our patients and our studies into three groups that from the young adult, middle age, and late age. I believe most of you are in middle age, right? So um, st starting from the different chronological age group, we study, first of all, gen genomic instability. That is we are mentioned in the hallmarks of aging, that is somatic mutation alterations contributes to pathogenic aging. And secondly, I have to mention because it's usually often to be ignored in the specific field that is inherited genetic variants. And we need to synthesize, we need to bring in inherited genetic variants because that's the basement, the foundation of our human beings into our prediction model. So that is, we are making it to do the risk prediction setup and individualized aging profile for personalized care. And of course, from that, we develop the DNA methylation that is a pattern changes in modified disease phenotype and provide interventions opportunities. So from genotype to phenotype, 
today is an example, it's all in one example, uh, all in one emphasis, um, uh, the physical fitness part, because we have at least four sections. So we want to emphasize the first part, that is musculoskeletal system. And for this specific system, we have yeah, psychopenia, with the risk of psychopenia this, in this morning and afternoon, so many good scientists are talking about it already. And I want to emphasize that is a specific gene called ACT3 related to the muscle performance. So muscle and the bone mass and the muscle strength and metabolic health that is so important to our healthy aging. And from here, I want to emphasize one gene here, all in today for an example from our work, that is ACTN3 R577X polymorphism. So based on previous discovery from our team, um, why we mention this gene, that is previously we started a lot on disease, on genomes, on genome disease, but not so many genomes that is are contributing to disease consequences. There are actually some genes, specific genes that is only contribute to different types of phenotype. Acetin three is a typical this type of gene. Um, we emphasize the SNAP five seven seven X. That is, we know from the RR tab, the R allele and X allele, for uh, an XX genotype results in complete loose of acetin 3 proteins. And that is what we call that definitivity. Uh, that is not a disease, just a definitivity that is also very common in human beings. So, further, was dis discovered this gene. We also, uh, uh, we also have continuous discovery and analysis on the human beings. That is, we found that uh, there are five at least independent studies reported ACT3 R577X is associated with elite athletic performance. Uh, my personal is a very, um, yeah, I'm very into sports. I don't know if you are. So um, I really like to look into the study results and, and, and thinking from the genome type. So the continuous study also showing that the ACT3 or 577X contributes to the normal variations of physical activity in human populations. And, we, and there is a specific type called RRX and XX. However, the, in the middle part, the R is more flexible to avoid muscle damage. So therefore, the second R genome type is a strong indicator for higher physical activity. Then, Starting from bi biology and the genome, previous study and discovery, we further to wonder, yes, muscle matters, and that is a key to health aging and longevity. So, ACT3 was found to have a common polymorphism, or 577X, results in complete loss of acetin 3 protein in skeletal muscle around 20% of human worldwide. And R577 X polyphysome is also associated with the muscle performance confirmed by many, many published work on R allele as a decreased fragility factor, while X allele as an increased fragility factor in muscle and bones. So therefore, we locked the specific genes to analyze and to further study 
the epigenome from this. Um, we selected two specific points. First of all, uh, we selected the R, of course, R577X. And the screen window selection, that is 3.7 KB fragment centered on R577X. Because the 3.7 KB fragment in X allele was used to demonstrate the positive selection of X allele in human populations. And, of, and not, not only that, we also used that another variant was found associated with higher ST3 gene expression and the physical activity in human beings, specific point. Then we tested the methylation used 136 uh, human beings, um, divided them into three groups like previously mentioned. So we Finally, we accessed, we found, we selected the CPG sites by location on the genome, as, a, as I mentioned before, the, that is the selection criteria, and we done the specific re regress each CPG sites with age select, age associated CPG sites. And we can see the data very beautiful line here. So in the end, in, in total, 13 CPG sites selected based on the genotype, which indicates the contribution to aging process. And of course, all in one gene is not in, enough, but this is starting. Uh, here, I just wanted to demonstrate and show what we are doing here and what is the approach from genotype to phenotype and how to leverage genetics and epigenetics contributing to physical fitness and muscle performance. So this specific CPG site selected, we are going to indicate that into muscle-specific epigenetic aging clock. So all of this work done by my team, and I want to acknowledge them, very good team members. Uh, and also here, we are located in the Hong Kong Science Park. Uh, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong Science Park. And of course, we cannot uh, forget about the Longevity Education Hub, which is bringing most of the longevity professionals in the world. Okay, thank you very much for, uh, yeah, for being here during the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. If there is an urgent question, we can take one. Otherwise, we'll move to another speaker as we are advancing time. Yes. Yeah, I understand. I'm just very happy to know that Hong Kong have Hong Kong uh, Longevity Medical Center, if I put correctly. I'm just wondering, what, uh, does it also include uh, biomedical clinical trials? Uh, if it is, if it is, then does it like cover phase one to phase four or just only? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the fantastic question. And <laughs> that's very important. Yes, yes, we do have this part. And we do uh, think clinical trial is very important, super important at this stage on credible longevity medicine and uh, practice because we are going to make the evidence-based longevity practice. And another thing I want to emphasize by your question, that is for um, why we are here, because we are Asia. We are Asia-specific genotype and epigenome type, right? Once we have good technology comes into China, we have to test, we have to find a place to down the evidence-based clinical trial first. So we, are, we wanted to, with Shiva, maybe in the future, yeah, one or two brought the vivid evidence-based with clinical trial uh, and the longevity practice to of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank here. you. Thank you.